Okay, so um, I'm going to show you what an exemplar folder looks like. The first thing that we can see in the corner is the literacy sticker. The idea with the literacy sticker is that you use these codes um, when you do your own self-marking and also when you peer mark and also so you understand um, what my marking codes mean. And these are the school literacy codes, so you should be used to these by now, so please ensure you're used to those and you should have those stuck um, in each of your fold, um, on the edge of your folder, okay, somewhere where you can access them readily on both folders if you have two folders. Okay, obviously at the front we've got here um, the notebook check revision sh uh, review sheet which has all of my comments um, on and, um, and I've already talked about those. I would ideally have those right at the front of your book so I can access them easily and also you're going to put your target sheets um, in, in the front as well with this. Okay, we can see here already that um, this folder is organised. We've got a general section at the front. We've got Greek art and architecture, assessment, then odyssey, then assessment. So it's nice and clear for both um, me when I'm marking it and also the student when it comes to revision. Okay, um, already we can see even on little sheets right from the beginning of the year, when I make um, any comments, the student is responding to them and making any spelling corrections where necessary. Okay, this um, this one still wasn't quite right, so I've, I've put the spelling in. Okay, so if you can use dictionaries as you, um, if, you if your spelling is an issue, please make sure you use dictionaries or, or something or an app that can help you to make sure you make the right words. Okay, um, then we can see here we've got all sorts of um, things um, at the front in the general section. For example, we've got the literacy mat, which has all sorts of information on the spelling and grammar. We've got the AQA guidance on A-level exams, and you can see here that the student has engaged thoroughly already with the guidance on the exams and has um, clearly read this um, so that when it comes to doing practice exams, or the exams themselves, the student has a good idea of what the, the examiners want and, um, and what they need to be doing. Okay, then close to that we've got all the level descriptors and these level descriptors of course apply to um, both the Odyssey and the architecture papers. Um, so you've got the level descriptors for 10 marks, the level descriptors for 20 and the level descriptors for 30. And obviously the student is aiming for level five and so has clearly read what they need to do for a level five. Then we've got the list of resources um, that I um, gave out at the beginning of the year for both the Odyssey and for Greek architecture and sculpture. A reminder of all the expectations um, and the tips to success that I gave out at the beginning of the year. And then we get into uh, the, um, the actual um, content itself. So this first one we can see is the Greek art and architecture. This is the information on the specification, on the key texts, etc. Um, and on here, we've got your target um, tracker sheets, okay? And what, what I now need to happen is that once you start to do assessment, you need to put your score or your grade um, on these sheets so you can continually monitor how you're getting on, okay, and see if you're actually sticking with, if you're on track to your target grade, whatever that may be. And that, of course, is on your um, reports, okay, and we talked about it at parents' evening. Down here, a reminder that you've got what um, a, an A or a B type student um, is able to demonstrate for their different assessment objectives. Okay, here's the section which is the, um, some of the useful words and phrases on discussing and analysing sculpture. You can see here that the student did, um, as I asked when I wrote the comments, I said were there any other key words that you could extract. This was based on the um, analysis of the essay, the A-star essay that I gave, and you can see that this student has gone and put um, some key points here and some key words, okay? And probably as we go along on the course, there's more and more um, words that you could be adding, for example, from any extra reading like Woodford or Emerson or anything that you see on the internet, uh, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Um, here is the analysis of the essay. So that's right near the front so that student can kind of see what, um, what 
they should be doing. And you can see it's been very thoroughly done, okay, as requested. And um, she did respond to my comments here. She did add them to the list, so um, that comment had been responded to. Then what we start to see is this student um, has done a lot of extra work in terms of um, gods and goddesses and religion and done a lot of extra notes. You can see here the student likes to use colour, post-its. Obviously, every student is different and um, likes to use different methods. But you can, if I flick through, you can see there's pages and pages of um, extra revision materials that, that that student has done in addition to school, in, in addition to the work that we've done in class. Um, here is a spelling mistake that this student hasn't responded to, so they'll need to go and um, make sure they go back to that. Okay. Then we've got other sheets. You can see clearly that the student is always responding to these sheets. They haven't just um, put them in and left them and not gone back to them. So they're constantly responding, highlighting, you know, obviously every student does this in a different way. Um, we've got things like on the notes, keywords have been extracted. So after, so this per, the student has been engaging with the materials outside of the lesson, they're like, what are the keywords I need to know so I can then put them into my revision materials? Okay, and then we can continue to see further note taking, use of, of colour as well to make any extra notes that they need to make. Okay, so constant um, dealing with the notes outside of class. Okay, here we're starting to get keywords, I think it was probably for revision for the test that we were doing and for the temple project that we did. Okay, this student clearly likes to use colour. Obviously, everybody, once again, is different, but um, it's a nice, clear way of showing the different parts of the temple. Okay, and so it goes. So the notes are very thorough, as you can see. The student has already started re creating revision notes on the, the work that we've been doing only a couple of weeks ago. So that means that they've got notes that they can clearly use. For example, there's additional ones here. These are in addition to the, um, the, the sculpture booklet that we've got. Now, um, this um, has happened for most of you. I've created, I talked about this last time, I put together these booklets which have lots of key information on both for the Odyssey and for Greek architecture and sculpture. And what I'm noticing is not many of you actually engaging with these materials. So these are these are like additional readings and texts that you can use, or diagrams or maps and things like that, timelines, that I think it would be quite useful if you just spend a little bit of time just starting to put things into context, okay? So it might be highlighting on the maps some of the plates, some of the temples, for example, the locations, or it could be um, looking at the timeline, you know, putting in the different temples, um, and sculptures that we've studied so far and looking at it in the context of what's happening in the rest of the Greek world, etc., etc. So I'd like to see some more engagement from all students with those materials because I've, um, I've produced them, you know, to help you. So there's lots of information in there. Okay. Um, we then can see we've got an assessment section. Okay. Um, and the student, during feedback, I'm not sure if you can see that, in that green colour pen, you can see that student is now going back over those and making notes so that they can then respond to those and revise those more thoroughly. Or when I've given feedback, has jotted down notes, and I notice quite a lot of you are doing that, which is really, really positive, okay? So feedback sessions are really important for that. Okay. What I would like to see now is perhaps in some of the, the assessment is actual, when you're looking at my, when I've marked assessment like tests like this, to go back over those and perhaps um, add add the things that you didn't quite get right or the words you spelt, misspelt. So don't just do it for your notes. Also look at your test themselves. So this student now needs to go over and, and have a look at some of the, the, the errors or the things that they could improve on. Um, right. A similar sort of thing happens with the um, with the Odyssey. Okay, so now we've got the Odyssey section. Um, this is right at the front, so you can kind of see the specification and what's going on. And then we start to get the background notes. Um, and 
if a student, for example, is decided to what? Here we go. Right. The student has decided to use a little symbol, for example, it's a little it's a little triangle with a exclamation mark to kind of say, oh, right, I need to go back and look at that. You could use your own symbols, but that, it just shows that, that students kind of responding to what was going on. Okay. Um, finally, the, all, everything's up to date. Okay, once again, um, it'd be nice to see the student responding more to these revision materials. Okay, so having a look. Um, for example, we can see some of it here, especially with the type of epithets, but having a look at some of the other notes and things I put um, put together, so perhaps a little bit of work on that. But um, overall, you can see that this is the kind of um, the kind of level of um, work I want to see in your notebooks. The student has demonstrated that not only are they up to date with the notes, not only are the notes thorough, but they're constantly personally responding to everything that's going on, and then they're working with those materials and they're responding to my comments. Okay?